Hi, my name is Patrick Dangliff. I'm going to be showing you how to use the new Xamarin Forms package. Let's get started. All right, let's jump right in. I'm going to use the Xamarin Forms and the portable shared library to create a single application that runs on different devices and behaves differently on different devices using partial classes. So we're going to use Visual Studio as our tool. And what I use, I use the built-in Xamarin template that generates me four different project files. Well, essentially three mobile targeted project files and one uh, shared project file. And uh, what it sets up is a single place where all the code can land for developing anything that's in common using your language of choice, likely C Sharp, and then taking the individual packages and individual projects and further customizing them for particular behaviors or maybe even um, particular functionality that might not be uh, available on other devices. So what I'm doing here is we're going to walk through how to use partial classes to achieve that result and still hang on to context in the right way and keep with separation of concerns. As you can see, the default template generates uh, also, in addition to all the different project files, uh, to kind of get an insight into what's going on. I am uh, looking at the, the app <coughs> class, which, as you can see, has a single function that it's looking for a content page, a Xamarin type, and in this default, it's going to create a, a simple label, and this is the area we want to replace. So you typically do more complex things uh, in terms of form design. We're going to do something very simple. We're going to create a single view that's statically bound and presents an image, a label, uh, and a button. And what I've done is I'm going to, in order to demonstrate my partial classes more quickly, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a couple of files uh, that I had prepared. Let me get a few of the namespaces set. And uh, just bring some images that we're going to show statically into each of the projects, as well as this lightweight helper function I wrote to accelerate some of the tasks. It hides you a bit from the Xamarin implementation, which is probably somewhat still important to be looking at, but I thought in terms of expediency, we do that. Uh, you'll likely develop something similar on your own if you're going to be doing imperative code. Uh, and certainly a balance between the design and generating your controls yourself. But in this case, I'm creating this simple MyView class and I'm starting by calling it a partial class and inheriting from view. And that allows me to respond um, from any parent views that might pick it up, but has my implementation kind of tucked in this partialness uh, where I can then subsequently go to each of the other projects, add that same view, and making sure that the namespaces are consistent. Uh, and then the classes will compile and merge essentially at, at sorry, merge at, at uh, compile time and become one at runtime. So anything that's available in the, in the host is naturally available in that same class in the target and uh, vice versa. So this is where you'll get an opportunity to think through, is this even the right design for what I'm doing? But more importantly, if it is, it's certainly a method by which you can then subsequently do more detailed things and respond to, for example, device specific events or plumb device specific actions or maybe even put some particular flavors in there. So um, here on uh, the main form, what I'm doing is I'm adding the, uh, the the controls that we needed to get going. We're doing the image control, we're doing a label control, a button control. And my model here is to use a basic grid control uh, to host the whole content of the pages. And you'll see here that uh, what I'm doing now is I'm creating um, a grid through my helper class, and I'll drill into that in just a moment because um, it, it teases out some of the basics uh, of getting your first Xamarin form uh, cross-platform package up and going. Um, so I think in terms of grids in my own head, so I created a, a helper function to establish the grid in the rows, kind of in a, a single call, and then I can su subsequently go and add controls to that grid at a higher level, templating level, uh, that my brain more easily wraps around. The helper function was just something that I had created as I was creating some customer apps. So I thought, boy, you know, this is something that I will probably do again and again. Uh, why not just uh, stub it out in one? So here I've got the three or four different rows, and let's see, one, two, three, and I've co coded a couple as auto, uh, one as absolute, and now I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you what that looks like. 
and simply what I'm doing is I'm taking the base grid and I'm cre creating uh, the different rows that were passed in for it in the Xamarin specific language, which is appropriately factored, but for my uses it was easier to scrunch it down into a handful of properties that were easily statically called. And so I create the rows for each of them and in my defined rows, here we can see uh, I have the different concerns again I care about. In this case it's mostly height in the style of row, motto, star, uh, or absolute. Uh, to get back, so let's get back to finishing our, our, our imperative code that represents our form. Uh, what I want to do is I want to, oh yeah, wait, hang on, i got to fix this. Okay. Yeah, I didn't need to new it up there. The static function new it up. So we're going to take that grid then and take uh, the existing controls that we've already created and add them to them in a kind of a template fashion. I've got the helper function that will essentially say add this control to this row and style it in this basic styling. So I have a a title text, text template that I'm, I'm going to plug in. Uh, I have basics for static images that uh, help us also tease out one of the things that is uh, cool about the Xamarin bit uh, in terms of device specific ch choices you can make in the base class even, but uh, that method uh, in terms of just style it lends itself to short inline um, functions and returns which it's very nice for the image. So let's go ahead and I'm going to take each of the images and, as you know, the, uh, each class will want those images bundled differently. So what I did is I set the different contexts, there's different content build types for each of those. So for the Android product, uh, I did the uh, Android resource type. And for iOS, I do bundle resource, and for the Windows Phone, I do the content. And that sets them all up, and we'll get to that function in a second where it calls on those. Uh, but uh, th that makes sure the content makes it to the device, of course. So uh, now I'm going to add that uh, first control, the, light, the, 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 the label that uh, represents the title. And I've, again, I've got some basic types, and you can see down here the templates for my different types. It's just a way to do temp somewhat loosely bound templating in an imperative way. Um, and there you see my image. And here's the, here's the uh, function that I've written here to get the, to use this uh, device.onplatform switch, which allows us to then go ahead and pull any specific uh, device specific information. In that case, uh, I'm pulling it from the resources directly directory specifically for Android, but leaving it in the root for the other two. So let's finish these up. Let's get all these in. And, and uh, so now we have an app that runs appropriately the same on all devices. Uh, if we were to compile and build, we'd take a look at that. But I want to make one quick last bit. And this is the uh, this is the method, this is the, the reason for the uh, partial class. So I'm going to stub out a, thorn, uh, a function for initialize custom form. Uh, this is always fun, generating the method stud and figuring out where Visual Studio decides to put it. Let's see, uh, in this case it looks like it's in, I don't know, let's see. Oh, the Android, okay, good. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, add uh, more text to the label. Uh, let's see. Yeah, more text to the label, and we will just indicate where iOS or oh no, we're Windows Phone. Okay, just indicate that this is the Windows Phone version. Now, here's where you do certainly some more interesting stuff. You would uh, tap into device-specific hardware. It's a good place to think of maybe putting uh, camera rendering for video apps uh, that do video recording or photos. Uh, so I just go into each of the separate views that I create them. Uh, the, my um, view, new view that I created before in each of them, and I can plumb in and do custom on each of them. So again, it's to the to the shared library, to single class, to the component or to the sub satellite uh, libraries, it's a single class, uh, yet they are doing different things. That's it. We're done. Let's build and run. And with that, we have all three apps running on all devices. Let's just take a quick look. 
Every Xamarin developer has far too many devices. And there we have the Windows Phone with the Windows Special text, the Android, and way over here in the corner is the Mac.